The thing about buying a brand new phone is that of course you're going to be spending a huge sum of money to pick up a device, but the moment you get it, its value quickly diminishes. That's because over time, like other tech products we pick up, whether it's a laptop, a video game console, or even a smartwatch, we're constantly using them day in and day out. And with that, their value is lessened over time. But then there are some gadgets out there that defy things, making them more valuable over a period of time versus when they were first released. When it comes to cell phones and smartphones, there are various factors that can obviously impact its value, like the condition of the phone and how well you took care of them over that span. So in this video, I'm gonna go over seven phones classified as collector's items that are worth some serious money. Now, if you happen to own any of the phones I mentioned in this list, I seriously hope you continue to hold on to them just because time will only make them more valuable. It might look like an inconspicuous phone that was very typical looking and functioning during its original run, but thanks to one blockbuster movie and time, the Nokia 8110 is one serious collector's item that's tough to come by. It was released back in 1996, and it did help to spur the modern day cell phone revolution. However, it wasn't until 1999 when the blockbuster film The Matrix came out where this phone really took notice. It was the phone used by Neo in The Matrix. It was delivered to him, he opened up the package, and out came the Nokia 8110. The cool thing about it was that when he picked it up, the bottom portion of the phone slid open to reveal the keypad so he could accept the phone call. But in reality, that sliding mechanism wasn't there. It was a manual thing, it wasn't automatic. So you actually had to pull down the cover to unveil the keypad. After making its presence in the Matrix, the Nokia 8110 has gone on to be a serious collector's item. If you go online and try to look for some pre-owned models that are in decent condition, you could find them around $55 to $200. But if you're trying to find one that's brand new and never opened, still in the box, you could find them for as much as $500. All of today's modern smartphones wouldn't be possible if it weren't for the Motorola Dynatech. It's a landmark device because back in 1973, the father of the cell phone, Martin Cooper, was working with Motorola and he helped to make the first phone call using a prototype version of the Motorola Dynatech. When we think about a brick of a phone, the Motorola Dynatech easily comes to mind because of its immense size. And when you think about it today, it kind of looks obnoxious because of that. Even though it was first commercially available back in 1984 and subsequent different versions were released, it became popular again around the 1990s thanks to the TV show Saved by the Bell. For anyone who watched the show, they will definitely know the Zach Morris phone. Obviously, you really can't use the Motorola Dynatech anymore with today's technology, but it does command a serious chunk of change because of its collector's item status. In fact, perfect working models of the vintage phone can easily fetch upwards around $500 on the average. You really wouldn't consider a phone released back in 2012 to be considered a collector's item nowadays. But when you went down in history as being one of the best performing camera phones ever released, you know it's gonna command a serious chunk of change if you could find one in really good condition. Even now, the Nokia 808 Peer Review is such a memorable phone. Even though the Symbian platform has been long extinct, it still packs one of the best cameras around. Its 41 megapixel camera sensor is still unbelievable when you think about some of the cameras we have today, but it proved itself to be quite versatile in capturing some sharp looking photos, even rivaling some of the best smartphone cameras today. And that's why it is a collector's item. Even though it doesn't fetch as much money as some of the other phones on this list, its value hasn't diminished terribly over the years since its release. In fact, working models in good condition can fetch between $200 and $300, but you know the value will only increase as time continues to pass by. We already know what the original Matrix movie did for the Nokia 8110, but would you believe that its sequel helped to popularize another phone? The Samsung SPH N270 made its debut in 2003 with the sequel, The Matrix Reloaded, and it really took center stage. It was a candy bar styled phone that was used primarily by Morpheus and even Neo. But the cool thing about this phone was that the movie prop version was exactly the same as its real life counterpart. The best part of the phone is of course, the spring loaded action that it had with the earpiece. You press it and it automatically would pop out just like it did in the movie. As far as the rest of the phone, the N270 wasn't all that advanced compared to its contemporaries. The reason why it's classified as a collector's item is because very few were actually manufactured. To be exact, only 10,000 were made, so it's a rare thing to find. So if you go online and try to find the phone, you'll find them selling on the average for about $750. 
you know its value is only going to increase from here because of its popularity in the Matrix movies. We all know how revolutionary the original iPhone was when it was released back in 2007, but it's crazy to believe that that first generation model is now considered a collector's item. It kind of makes sense because when you look back at the iPhone, it did bring a lot of advancements to the smartphone. Take for example, you had things like capacitive display, kinetic scrolling, pinch zooming, and much more. If you managed to pick up the original iPhone when it first came out, you probably forked over upwards around $600 to pick up one of the models. Sure, you could probably find some working models at reasonable prices online, but if you're looking for one still in the original packaging, it's just crazy because they can easily go for thousands of dollars. On the surface, the Motorola Aura R1 might look and function like any other phone that was released back in 2008 that wasn't a smartphone. You could say it was a dumb phone because it wasn't running a smartphone platform. But don't be fooled because it employed some premium materials with its design, like stainless steel and sapphire, which were unheard of back then. It also featured this very unique swivel-like opening mechanism with its display. And not any display, but a circular display. That swiveling mechanism in particular is very notable because the Swiss made gears inside were composed out of Rockwell hardened steel and ball bearings. You can kind of equate the Motorola Aura R1 as a Rolex because of its meticulous construction and premium design. Honestly, the value of the Motorola Aura R1 has barely diminished since its release in 2008, just because the standard model of the phone can easily fetch for around $1,000. And even though there were other limited editions of the phone, like one that was adorned with diamonds, the standard version of the Aura is still highly regarded as a collector's item just because of its rarity. And finally, we have the Nokia 8800 Art Carbon. There were several variants of the Nokia that were made and released, but the Art Carbon definitely stands out. It's a premium constructed slider phone running Nokia's Series 40 operating system. And it featured premium materials such as stainless steel, carbon fiber, and titanium with its design, which was kind of impressive for a slider phone. Basically, it's very similar to the Motorola Aura's mechanism because the sliding action here with the 8800 Carbon Art is comprised out of ball bearings in order to achieve its characteristic sliding motion. And of course, the carbon fiber it utilizes with its design definitely adds to its premium look and feel. Nowadays, it's a rare thing to find. Most working models of the phone can easily go for $500 on the average, which is still a very respectable amount for a phone released back in 2008. However, excellent condition models of the phone with the original packaging can easily be found selling north of $1,000. And that's about it folks, those are 7 phones classified as collector's items that are worth some serious money. If you happen to own any of the phones I talked about in this list, you definitely want to keep them around, especially if they're in excellent condition. So what other phones would you consider as collector's item? Please leave them a comment so I can check them out myself. If you guys want to learn more about the phones I talked about in this video, you can check out our website, PhoneRena.com. This is John V, signing off.